Okay, before we begin, let's hear the lines in Latin. Seek ait et dicto citius tumida aicora placat. Collectasque fugat nubes, solemque reducit. All right, first of all, let's look at this word, ait. The understood subject, of course, is Neptune, who we saw in the last passage. Virgil has not given us a new subject, so we will assume that Neptune is still the one who's doing all the action. Thus, Neptune spoke, seek ait. Et dicto citius tumida aicora placat. Okay, this word dicto and this phrase dicto citius could throw off a less than skilled Latin student, but I bet you remember that dicto is an ablative noun here, and it's working as an ablative of comparison with the adverb citius. More quickly, that's what Ketius means, raises the expectation of an ablative of comparison. So whatever Neptune did, he did it more quickly than speech. Notice with Tumida Ikora, we have a noun adjective pair, the teeming waters, and then finally we get the verb, placat. So Neptune is going to do something to the teeming waters. Do you remember placat? If not, take a second, look it up, and see if you can come up with a translation. Hopefully you got something like, thus he spoke, and he calms the teeming waters more quickly than speech. Now let's look at the second line. Collectasque fugat nubes. Ooh, cool, another noun adjective pair. Virgil doesn't put them close together, but we are Latin geniuses and we are not going to be fooled. Notice collectas and nubes are accusatives. So we have another instance where Neptune is doing something. Fugat, of course, is a verb. So Neptune does the verb fugat to the collected clouds. Again, take a peek at your vocab and see what he does to the collected clouds. Okay, let's look at the next phrase. So lemque reducit. Do you notice a pattern here? Once again, Virgil is giving us an accusative solem before the verb. So now we know that Neptune has done several things. Number one, he placats the teeming waters. Number two, he fugats the collected clouds. And number three, he reducits the solem, which of course is the sun. Thus he spoke. And he calms the teeming waters more swiftly than speech. He collects, I'm sorry, he puts to flight the collected clouds and he brings back the sun. All right, on to the next phrase. Chimothui simo et triton ad nixus acuto detrudent nawis scapulo, lewat ipse tridenti, at vastas aperet sirtis, et temperat aicor, atque rotis sumas lewibus per labator undas. Really, Virgil? Do we need to make a whole sentence four lines long? Don't freak out. We are Latin geniuses, and anybody can do this, including us. First of all, notice these guys, Kimothui and Triton, are new subjects. They must be friends of Neptune, helping to clean up the mess caused by the storms. And then we have a participle, ad nixus. Ad nixus modifies Triton. So, Chemothui and Triton are doing something. And then we're going to describe Triton. Ad nixus acuto. Ad nixus is a really pesky participle because it takes a ablative object. So, leaning upon or using a sharp something. Acuto means sharp. A sharp ablative. Let's find the noun that goes with acuto. Nope, not detrudent. Not now is. Oh, here it is. Triton using a sharp using a sharp rock frees the ships. Notice that long I. So Kimothui and Triton work together apparently to free the ships, but only Triton is the one using a sharp rock. I don't know. Maybe that's his tool. Okay, then we're gonna continue. Lewat ipse tridenti. Notice Virgil wants us to understand that Triton and Camothui are no longer the subjects. He's given us a new nominative, ipse, and that refers to Virgil himself. He himself lightens something or lifts stuff up with his trident. 
Okay, we're back to Neptune some more at Wastas Apparit, Sirtis. Wastas, Sirtis, another noun adjective pair in the accusative. Guess what? Neptune is going to do things to the Wastas, Sirtis. He's going to open, Apparit, the vast shallows, or sandbars. I suspect he's doing that to help Virgil's, or Aeneas's fleet escape. At Temperat Icor, and he tempers the water. And we're still going on with Neptune. Atque roti sumas levibus per labator undas. Notice we have rotis modifies levibus. Sumas modifies undas. Notice that word order. A, B, A, B. Think about what poetic device that might be. But meanwhile, notice that sumas and undas is accusative. So Neptune is going to do something to the accusative. He is going to, let's see, slip through the high waters with his ablative pair, with his light wheels. Virgil is trying to draw a picture of Neptune zipping along the top of the waves on his special Neptune boat, apparently, that has wheels that go over the water. Okay, and that is the end of this section. Sorry, the video goes on, but I don't know how to cut off the dead stuff at the end yet.